I'm really interested uh, with the whole superhero mythology, right? So I created my own superhero. So Bipolar Girl, for me, represents this like fierce, determined, you're gonna get out of bed, you're gonna get up, like almost like a little bit of a drill sergeant, like you're gonna keep trying and you're gonna get up, we're gonna do this today. Casey the Wonder Dog is a sidekick, right? Which was based on my actual dog, Casey. Um, and Casey was present for me. Uh, she followed me all over. If I, if I laid down on the couch, she would lay down next to me. So there was this loyalty and compassion. And then there was a third character that I understood as the creature, right? Which was this combination of shame and perfectionism and depression uh, and uh, primordial ooze. Bipolar Girl isn't really me. I mean, she's a part of me, um, but I also think she is this kind of superhero character that I think helps, keeps people going and keeps people alive even when it's, it's just an incredibly difficult struggle. A big part of living with mental illness is shame. For, that's certainly been the case for me. Uh, and so part of me sort of engaging in my own healing process uh, was to start telling my own story. A film seemed to be the way to do it. I cannot get out of bed because I am sick with depression. I am not yet willing to admit my mind is not my own to manage. I would prefer to believe that my failure is one of the will and that it is my strength, not submission, that will set me free. Bipolar Girl Rules the World alternates between pieces of my own story uh, that have been illustrated by Emily Ensminger and then four other stories that focus on different characters. So Box was the third piece that Emily and I worked on together. In this case, it is um, the character that I identify with most closely, kind of it literally trapped in this box and bipolar girl trying to get in, uh, you know, and, and just I'm banging against the wall and uh, there's so much shame. And uh, this sort of, uh, I don't know, doggy door of like compassion right opens and Casey the Wonder Dog is able to get in and bring me some comfort and decrease that sense of shame and isolation. I started my depression when I was uh, close to four years old. We were living in Beijing, China back then. Fear uh, begins with Zenglo as a child uh, in China during the Cultural Revolution, and his parents were taken away. His sister, who was 11 years old, took care of him. The story goes from that initial fear uh, and the way that it kept him safe in a country at a time when speaking against the government could have gotten him killed. Was it going that I might wear them, or was it just a fashion decision? I've worked for, I guess now, almost 23 years in the mental health field. So I saw some of Dawn's films, and the most amazing thing to me about Dawn's work was, one, how it resonated with me. I could see myself in some of the stories that she told, and then I could also see so many of the people that I had worked with over the years. And the stories were told so beautifully and so compellingly. What I've seen when I hear people responding to Dawn's work is how it empowers them to start telling their own stories. And I think that's the most important way that we can address stigma, is that if people can tell their stories and if we can recognize this sort of all-encompassing humanity, 
that that's the way we're going to fight stigma. And if we can address stigma, then I think we can improve so many things um, in the way that we treat mental illness and the way that we respond to people who live with mental illness. Since the beginning of the project, I've described Bipolar Girl as an animated documentary and community engagement adventure. And my goal for the work is for the adventure to continue and to allow opportunities, not just for people to connect with me, but to connect with resources, to connect with one another, because that is to me um, one of the most important things that can happen.